Tony. This one's for you. I saw your thing where you're talking about black holes and lights getting sucked into black holes and you're trying to figure everything out. And the reason that they're so hard to understand is because we have a fundamental misunderstanding of what gravity is. So in the traditional model of gravity, it's something like this. We got a ball that's sitting on a, on a 2D plane and making a depression in it so that when things pass by it, they tend to curve around like that. This is a fundamentally flawed idea because I don't live in 2D world. I live in 3D world, which means that that it's not on a plane. Space time isn't a plane. Space time is 3D. There's more to it, but it's essentially 3D, which means gravity has to be doing something completely different than what you've been taught that it's doing. But I have a hypothesis for that, and I'd be happy to share it with you. Okay, so the standard idea of gravity is that you have you know sort of a 2D plane, and objects kind of sit on it like a bed sheet, and they cause like a little depression. And as things are passing by it, they kind of get caught in that depression a little bit, right? And if there's enough mass, then the thing will just kind of get stuck in a perpetual loop and cycle around that object all the time. But that doesn't work because we live on a planet and everything gets sucked in towards the middle. So we know gravity, gravity is pulling in all three dimensions all the time. So this model of gravity fundamentally does not work. The idea is right, you know, that things move around the objects, but the reason is actually kind of spooky. So instead of thinking of space-time as a 2D plane, I want you to think of it as a 3D cube, right? And within that cube are all these spheres. It fills the whole thing. Got it? Okay, so hopefully you saw the first two videos, but basically this cube represents space-time, a small block of space-time. And these individual circles that are in here are all one plank length, okay? Individual circles at one plank length. And what happens is, like, when you have these circles, you know, they, they meet up, and they, they form little hexagons in there. And where they meet, that's where your graviton is. And the length between the gravitons, that's the string in string theory, right? So breaking this down into two dimensions, you can think of each one of these points as a graviton. And then each one of these going between them as the strings in string theory. And these are vibrating. Those are vibrating. But what's interesting is what causes those to vibrate, and this is gonna solve your problem about black holes. So I'll be right back with another video. Hang on second. Okay, so now we're back to the cube, right? So this is a cube, one cube of space time, of however many lengths, right? And you can see I got all these circles on here. Now you have to imagine that each one of these circles is like, and within this cube, is like an impossibly densely packed um, grid of little steel magnets, like the little ball bearing magnets, you know, and they're all stacked in together, okay? And each one of them has, you can't really see that, has a positive and negative charge, which keeps them interlocked. If you look up uh, quantum foam, this is where I got this idea from. The problem with quantum foam idea is that they don't give it a charge, so it ends up being like this amorphous blob that's flopping all over the place and it's kind of useless. But if you give each of the nodules within the quantum foam a positive and a negative charge, then they become an interlock grid, which becomes a, a localized, stable space-time. So this is where it gets a little bit creepy and addresses black holes, okay? Because let's imagine for a second that we have a photon. Now we know that a photon isn't really a thing. We know that a photon is only energy, right? It's not actually a particle. It's more like an energy potential that's like traveling through space at the speed of light, right? And it's coming through space-time. And when it enters into space-time, it does something really interesting. So as these photons are traveling, now this is just like a single row of those individual uh, quantum foam nodules, if you will. As it's going through here, it puts a tension on those two. It's a, it, it excites the space-time and tries to pull itself apart, right? And it creates a negative uh, magnetic charge within there. And that negative magnetic charge tends to draw other things into it. Okay, so now remember that where these things are touching 
like in here is going to be your gravitons, right? And in between there is going to be the string. And it's very, very important to remember. And also important to remember is that this is a potential. It's not a real thing, right? It's an energy potential. And it's vibrating at a certain frequency, which is also very, very important to remember. So as the photon is passing through space-time and running past those strings, its vibration frequency is being picked up by the vibration frequency of the strings themselves. And they're vibrating. And once it creates a resonance pattern, guess what it does? It starts attracting to itself other frequencies that are like it. And these photons, because they're energy, start compiling into atomic structures which are similar, which start compiling more atomic structures which are similar, and then eventually become molecules. Okay, so now we're back on space-time again, but I'm not going to draw all those circles again because it takes a while. So, imagine that this is full of circles, and what I want you to imagine is a TV screen, you know, with individual pixels, right? And what's happening is that the atoms are passing through it, but instead of being a two-dimensional TV screen, it's a three-dimensional TV screen, and the individual pixels are uh, one Planck length uh, links between gravitons and strings, okay? So that's kind of what's going on. So what's happening at the quantum level is as light is passing through and forming itself into atoms and atoms are being refreshed, you're moving through space-time. So you're actually being refreshed as you're moving through space-time, which is a difficult thing to conceptualize. But here's what it does. It means 3D objects have gravity coming in all directions, which is what reality shows. It also means that the gravity that goes between objects in space-time is going to be con I've got other videos that I put together where I demonstrated this, but think of this as like a sock, right? So the, the gravity within space-time that are pulling each other from two different objects is kind of like a sock. So in my video, I took like a tape measure and a Doctor Who thing, and you put them inside a sock and you time and you spin them around. And the way that they move is the exact way that you can imagine this, and it's the way that uh, stellar objects and celestial objects uh, revolve around each other, okay? But what this means is that if you have a stellar object like the sun, the more mass an object has, the more energy that it puts out, the more disruption it puts on space-time, which means the more gravity that it's going to have because it disrupts space-time more, which causes more of negative tension, so it draws more things into it in all different directions. So what this means is that if there's a star over here and the sun's here and I'm standing over here, the light from the star go around the sun over to me. If you watched all those videos in sequence, you'll know where I got to now, but otherwise you might be a little bit lost and this is going to be totally bizarre. But what happens though is that if this stellar object grows large enough through it or it has a big enough mass, not only is it going to bend space-time, but as that light is traveling past the star and trying to get to me, it's going to get sucked into that. It's going to suck the individual light particles into it. But the question is, where does it go? And that's a whole different video series. So, full disclosure, if you go and try and research this idea anywhere, you're not going to find it. Because you know what? It's my idea. And I've been trying to find physicists anywhere who would listen to this idea because it's really the only thing that makes sense um, and takes all the different things. And it also answers questions about consciousness and reality and uh you know quantum energy and where the black holes come from and like all kinds of craziness so the last part of this is and i have to have an understanding that um in, if my theory is correct then uh, gravity is the clearest demonstration that we have that we live in a holographic universe because uh, without us being in a holographic universe there would be no gravity because it's actually the um the process of the individual photons traveling through space-time and causing a disruption. It's energy traveling through space-time causing a disruption in space-time, which generates gravity. So, if that's the case, that proves that there is, quote, no matter as such. I also talked about localized space-time because in my model, space-time is a structure, it's a crystalline structure that is expanding out uh, across uh, the, the emptiness of space. But but into the absolute nothing, where there aren't even any virtual particles like blinking in and out. Virtual particles don't come until space times there. Now, as I, as I mentioned, there are a lot of other implications with my idea, because not only does it describe, you know, that uh, 
gravity is a product of us being in a, a holographic universe, but it also, if you push it far enough, it describes uh, intention. It describes that um, you know how we perceive other objects, uh, you know, around us. So it answers a lot of those sorts of questions. Also, what's really nice about it is that it doesn't negate uh, Einstein's theory of gravity, and it also doesn't negate any Newtonian physics. So it really does become a really nice model of uh, the reality that we're in. Also, there's new science that's coming out that says that space-time isn't really even a thing. And my model also answers that question, because if space-time is expanding out into the nothing, then that means it's a thing that doesn't fundamentally exist, which is a really interesting and difficult proposition. If you watched all those videos and you watched them in sequence, then you may have one fundamental question, and that is, what's in between the gravitons and the strings? What's within that space? Ah. And my hypothesis is that that is the joining point between uh, the, the unified field and the physical reality. That's where things are happening. And uh, w what that is, is that within the unified field, there's infinite intentions and possibilities, and everything's kind of swirling around all the time. But within the, um, the physical reality, there can be an intention. And uh, when the intention sets up a, a resonance pattern, then the infinite possibilities that are in the unified field latch onto that resonance pattern and start to manifest. And you know, they start to blossom out into the world. I use the example of a seed that turns into a tomato plant. All right, this is the last one that I'll leave you alone for a while. Is the, and this is the thing where it gets really super trippy, is just imagining that everything that you are, all the, you know, your, your organs, your bones, and everything like that are all at the atomic level, energy, that are moving through space-time, but they're all being kind of refreshed in the same manner so that it looks like your body and your guts and the food and everything like that and simultaneously is happening for like the bee that flies around the flower that flies around the airplane that's up in the air and the sun and the you know nebula it's all happening there all the time which means that the 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 substance the the fabric behind space time is the quantum so and but they're like they're constantly moving and interchanging in this like beautiful constant dance of like intention within reality meeting with the potential within the quantum and manifesting out and back